Um, hi, welcome back to another video. Um, today, I must do job. Um, I've got to do my um, power steering pump on my um, Land Rover Defender BB5. Um, I've got a new belt as well and a new tensioner. The belt's always made a bit of a squeaking sort of noise, so I think it's sort of time we get it um, get it done. And also, the um, power steering pump has got an exchange on it, so I have to get it back within 14 days to why it cost me £50 more. So, firstly, this comes off, then, I, then I've got to get the fan off. I've got the special tools I bought for that, get it off to make my life easier. And that's just uh, the first job on here. Um, you can see on the floor, it's been just about, I moved about yesterday, but it's been leaking on that mat, and it's been very, very groany. If I can undo this, you can see it's actually leaked it all out. So um, I haven't I haven't used this since it's um, been that low. I did buy some to top it up, but I've got to get it done. And also, I may, depending on how things go today, I may do the service on it as well. I've got a, uh, it's got one oil filter somewhere around there. And it's got another one as well. I've got to find out because got, it's got two on this, like a rotary filter and... Um, I think one possibly might be there. I haven't really worked on one of these before, not much, so. Um, and um, the other one, I shall find it when I need to, but anyway. Um, the first thing is to get this front bit off and to get them fans off, so I'll show you when I'm moving on. Now, I've got that off, it's incredibly easy, just four screws. I got to the fan now, so I can see a little bit more what's going on. Um, what I don't know if I need to take it off, but I might just take it off just to give me a little bit more room. And it has got a leak from there as well. I think it could have a rock cover leak. So um, that's not important at the moment because that's not what I'm concentrating on. Um, I've got the special spanners. Uh, it's just TD5 on them. It's supposed to get this help uh, massively getting this fan off. So hopefully that will that'll do that. I think it will. Um, and then we shall investigate how to get what I've got to get off. Um, the power steering pump is there. I've got to use the same pulley because it doesn't come with a pulley. So I've got to see how that unbolts and changes over. I think it was leaking. I don't think it was the pipes. I hope it wasn't the pipes, but uh, regardless, I plan to keep this vehicle a long time. So everything I sort of do, I want to be long lasting. So to put a new power steering pump on, probably the original one on here. So it's done 200,000 miles. So then it, um, should be good for a good time yeah it's actually the one i bought has been um it's a reconditioned one but it's supposed to be reconditioned with parts as good if not better than the original so just have to see how it goes but i'm sure it won't be a problem so yeah i'll get this fan off i'll try and put you on the head cam so you can see me do it and um I'll go from there Well, you can see that, but um, it, the tools made it very easy. The, sp the spanner actually wasn't quite, um, well, it could be because there's a bit of rust on there, it didn't quite go on there 
brilliant leaper. It was good enough. So that could have been a difficult uh, pain of a job. It's quite easy. And you can see on these, there's a fair bit of room in these. So, um, yeah, we can um, get everything off now. Um, I'll um, release the tensioner to get the get the belt off. I've got, yeah, like I said, I've got a new belt and everything, so and we're pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm, I might just take a photo just in case I do forget where it goes round, but it's pretty straightforward. So I'll show you it when I've moved on a little bit. As you can see there, that was very, very simple to get that belt off. Um, I haven't took him. Um, well, I'll probably just get a bit of paper and just make a drawing of where the where the belt goes, just so I don't um, just saves time later on in case I can't remember. Um, so yeah, I'll. Um, this might not take too long. There's the tensioner down there. What I've got to replace. I've got a new one of them, and there's the power steering pump there. Not quite sure how that comes off yet, but I'll look into that. And I'm hoping this job isn't going to take too long. The um, the pulley come off it, it comes easy actually. I just sort of used that um, spanner there to just lever in against the bolts and then um, undid it with the socket. So yeah, it was easy to get off. Should be down nearly to where I need to be to see about this power steering pump in a minute. See what's um, bolts I need to take out, etc. come off okay so yeah there we are there's lots of bolts around there so I think that's a lot of what they are so I'll probably off camera I'll probably um it's that much pretty straightforward and there is a pipe there probably a pipe underneath I don't know how the one underneath is held I think that actually is just a jubilee cliff the side one is uh, like a spanner so I have to see if I've got a spanner to fit that I do want to do the rear brakes on it as well but I don't think I've got a jeep clamp to push the uh, piston in there caliper back so it might be next week's job but I was a little bit worried about that pulley because I didn't really want to replace that that one's well there's another one there I think they're about 40 pound each but they don't seem too bad so so at the moment I think I'll leave be with them I think they'll be okay so um <laughs> it seems to me moving pretty free uh, I think a lot of the trouble was on the um the tensioner um but also that could be making the noise there on the power steering pump and it was leaking from somewhere so um, I just hope it looked like it was coming from above rather than where the pipes go in so it looked like it was coming from higher so I bit the bullet and bought it and um, hopefully we'll get it done and it's all fine. yeah so I've loosened them um, five bolts um, I didn't take I nearly took it off but I didn't because I wanted to undo that pipe on the side I've just managed to do that now I've got a spanner on and I had to lever it with our ink spanner as well. A little tip, um, I'll just try to show you actually. I don't know how pretty you can see, but if you hook that in the top of a opening spanner like that, it'll give you more leverage. Like that. Hope you can see that. If you can't, if you can't let me know on the video and I'll explain it. Because it just gives you a bit more leverage. But I think that's loosened, well, a fair bit now. I definitely uh, cracked it, so. Oh yeah, we'll see. Yeah, there you go. So that's loosened it now. So what I'm going to do is um, probably just get a bowl underneath, just in case there is any fluid left in the system at all, so it doesn't go on the ground. And then I think that will come off. And then I can probably take the underneath one off when I drop it down. So I'll see how it goes. I might not be able to film that because it might be a bit tricky. I'll see how it is when I when I get there. But I think it's only held on that pipe there with Jubilee clip and that one is held on. Yeah, I think I might land and turn that other bolt out as well is the only annoying thing. I might have to hold that and then re-undo it. But Yeah, when I showed you before, it was that bolt had to be held behind. That does come on the new, that bolt at the back does come on the new um, power steering um, pump. But it would be really hard once that's out to disconnect them too. So I've actually done it now. What I did, I was worried about hitting the radio, so I put a bit of old carpet tile in there just to um, protect the radio. I think that might be 
quite loose now, yeah. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's probably a bit dark down there, but get the spanner on. Yeah, it's nice and free now, so that's the main main uh, pipe off. So it's actually finger tight now. As you can see, I've put gloves on now. Always a good um, thing to do. I always forget to begin with, and then I have absolutely filthy hands, and it's just not what you want. I use them actually for um, work as well, gardening. I use them uh, for weeding because um, you can sort of still do things with them, like you know, undo little bolts and all that, and you're not sort of restricted too much. Uh, I haven't actually put the bolt underneath. There is a little bit of fluid coming out. But that's all free, so the other one underneath is just a Jubilee clip, so that's um, easy. And I think this pump can come off, and then I'll show you the new pump before I put it on. Then we can get that connected on, I think that side, but we've, uh, we'll be done quite easy. And the tension shouldn't be massively hard as well. It's quite low down, but I think that can be sorted easy enough. I'll show you all of that. When I've got this off, I'll show you all of the parts I've got to go on, and we'll make sure everything's the same, and then we can crack on from there. Um, yeah, so now it's, it's all off. Um... I've actually noticed that um, I'm not sure I'm right because I don't know that much about these. I've worked on cars on and off for a long time, but behind there, the um, power, I don't know how well you can see it, it might be too dark. But the power steering pump um, connects to like some, a, a pizza turned around. And I think that's probably the water pump. So that's quite a good idea, really. On the back of the um, power steering pump, it's like a little. It, a piece that locates and then it runs the water pump. Something definitely something to do with the water side of things because you can see on the back. So yeah, I never knew that. But um I'll go and get the new pump now and then we'll just give this a little bit of a click. I'll take that out of the moment, a little bit of a clean up because I've dripped a little bit of power steering fluid now not much. And then we'll um get the new bit fitted then sort the tensioner side of things out and then should be well on our way there. Um, there we are. Everything all looks looks good and looks the same. Uh, like I said, this one's a, a reconditioned one. So this one's got to go back, and then they'll do the same again, and you can sell it again. So I say fifty pound by sending that one back. Um, I'm happy. It will. That's a bit I, I mentioned there. That's a bit that clips into that water. So I think that could be the water pump side of things. Now if it just works through the back of this, so that's quite a good idea. I may be wrong, let me know if I'm wrong because I'd like to know if I planned. I've worked on cars for years and years and years and the only thing I've ever had to do with a Land Rover is um, I try, well I attempted an engine change on a, to make a petrol series 2 to a, to a diesel but it was we sort of give up on the project, run out of time and give up on the project so we never got that done and that's the only time I sort of worked on one so um, a little, even though I'm mechanically minded, I'll learn a little bit as I go along. So I'll get this bit on, then I'll show you the other bits what I, what I fit on. So at least it's nice and clean to fit on. Um, just a quick tip, um, experienced people and mechanics will know, but um, on the Jubilee clip it has got the screwdriver to tighten up. But if you can get in, get a small socket on, I think it's 7mm on most of them. Um, Get it on there because then you can just get it up there a little bit tighter. Um, the Jubilee clip looks a bit rusty now, but it's lovely and free, so uh, I haven't got another one, so it's gonna have to it's gonna have to go on there. So yeah, just thought I'd tell you that, and then you can just get it, just have a bit more leverage to get it tight. Yeah, now what I have what I have to do is um, locate. I you can see the camera isn't great there, but and it's quite it's underneath anyway, so you probably struggle to see, but it locates. In, oh no, I could, I'll be able to feel when it actually does locate, and I think it has. So, um, this is take two, I got the bracket the wrong way around, so I'll try to get that in there like so to get us started. I think it's like there, I'll get the other long one in at the bottom, the ones at the bottom are longer. The bolts are quite similar to the ones on the, on the pulley, but they are longer, so I think it's that one, that one, and that one. So one was shorter, I would assume I should 
sort of marked them, but I assume the two longer ones are there. And the shorter one is, is there. So we've got them back in. I'll nip up one while you're watching and then the others I'll do off camera because it's not that exciting you watching me do up the five bolts. You can see the it's all in now. I'll double tight it, check it at the end, but I'll just get them back now. Um, so then five um, bolts back in. I've gone up as far as I dare. I'm, uh, I've come having many hassles before for over tightening bolts, so there'll be a torque setting for them, but I didn't use it. I just did it as far as I think, and they're nice and tight. Um, I remember years ago I was doing a cylinder head. I was nearly at the end. Um, I was putting an injector back in. It was on a Volkswagen. And over tightened the injector and cracked the head, so um, better not overdo it on this. It's only into I mean, cast aluminium, so um, I don't want to strip the threads. So I've took that little bung out that was in the, um, in the side, so that means now I can get that pipe back in, if you can see, and then get that. That um, connector back here, I think it started. Feels like it has. Usually, there sometimes a bit of a pain again, like the um, brake pipe um, end connector things. But, sorry, my hands in the way you can't see, but that's gone on there easier than I imagined it would. So I'll just nip it up with a span of that. I haven't got as I'm doing it up this time. I haven't got to hold the other nut because it's going to be tightening up. And then what we'll do is put the pulley back on there, and that should be that that should be that side of it done. I hope it wasn't the pipe leaking, but like I said, uh, the the old one did feel a bit loose. This one feels a lot tighter, so and it could be a lot of the sort of what sounds like engine noise I've had. Um, could have been a, a groany power steering pump. Like I said, it's probably been in it since um, since new, so. Just going to clean up the worst of what I've dripped down compared to my usual standards. I haven't made too much mess. It'd be nice to get this little job done. So um, yeah, I'll um, just tighten up. You don't really, need, you don't need to see that. And I'll put the pulley back on, and then that's that side, that side of it done. So that bottom pipe's on. That other one's nearly on, nearly tight. So it's not too much to it, to be honest. It's uh, and with these there is a decent amount of gap between as well to work on. So this is a job, you know, a little bit of mechanical skills and a few spanners. You could easily do it yourself at home on the weekend. Um, so that's the good thing about Land Rovers. There's plenty of space and they're reasonably easy to work on. So um, one job I have got to do, I've got to do the swivel, the swivel um, balls. Um, underneath um, mine are leaking a bit of grease I'll show you soon I'm leaking a bit of grease and um, any replacing but it's about hundred pounds a side so I'll pace myself to do that when I've got a, um, a bit of money and then we'll we'll move on yeah so when I was tightening them on there um, I just held that in against the others like that as I was tightening each individual one just so I can turn because they're a bit of pain when they turn turn you can't really get it tight but Feels a lot more resistance on that now. The pump head's a lot tighter, so um, hopefully I solved the problem there. Like I said, all them other ones seem to be running quite smoothly. No play on that. I know. They're quiet. They don't seem like be like they're rumbling or anything. So, um, so the power steering side of things, I think, is done. So um, I'm just going to go and have a quick tea break. I'm going to have a bit of tea, yeah, um, or actually a lot I think I'm going to have, um, and then um, get back out here and get the tensioner off. I hope, I might have to go underneath to do that, I have to see, but I'll get the other one. Just have um, there's a new tensioner, um, I actually I thought that was plastic, I thought they'd changed that bit of plastic, but it, the, the 
black wheel, but it isn't. It is um, it is metal. And actually, the the bolt is there, so I'll have to see. I'll, I'll, maybe an Allen key on this. I can't quite see what it is in in there. Um, I can feel it in there, but what it is, I don't know. So um, we'll have a look down there in a minute, and then get that changed. It should be pretty easy because it's just got I got the locating piece there and the bolt will go through the middle so it should be a very quick easy job and then belt back on power steering fluid back in get it get it running and then um, just let the, the the power steering sort of um, bleed itself um, and fill up and um, that should be that done really so this has been pretty pretty straightforward then there's just a bit of fan back on which is easy enough because I've got the tool now and um, then the cover and then that side of it's done. Then I'll um, probably leave it running for a while, let the oil warm up, and then I'm tempted to do the do the service because I've got the stuff. I might as well. It's in my way. I might as well get it on here where it's supposed to be and get it done. Um, there is one that is un under there. That's the rotary one, and then the other one I did notice a right pain to get down there. That's the only thing about starting up first. I'm gonna be near the, near the exhaust. I've got quite an oil leak on this though. I don't know where all that's coming from. Put down there, quite an oil leak. I reckon. I reckon that. Um, I reckon the rocker cover is is probably leaking a bit. So I'm gonna have to take that top off and have a look and put a new one new one on. I'd like to adjust the tappets on it. Um, not tappets, injectors on it anyway. You can adjust the injectors on these. So I'd like to do that. But that would probably be a job for another day. It doesn't seem to lose any oil. Um, the oil level seems to be, it's always been near the full, I've never had any in it since I've had it and I've had it since last November and what is it now, it's June, so I've had it over half a year, so it could be a problem that's sort of been repaired before I had it, but it's, um, I never cleaned it up, but, but we'll see, I might even, say, I haven't got a steam cleaner myself, but I have got pressure washer so I might even um, put some degreaser on it and give it give it a real good clean up and I might be able to locate where it's come from. Diesel not so bad because um, you haven't got the electric quite the same as on a, on a petrol. So um, as long as you don't get in the air intake and drag it in for their water you'll you'll be okay. So yeah, we'll give them a quick tea break and then I'll get out and get that done. Um, getting the old engine off hasn't been as easy as I thought as you can see loads of sockets and bit that bits there but in the end if I actually managed to do it I'll show you what I had to do you might as well watch me getting it off now very simple once I've managed to find the right uh, tool for the job well we'll get there in a minute about the right tool for the job if you've got one of these you might well have come across this problem I managed to get around it I nearly went up my dad's to get um, I thought I'd need, but I managed to improvise at home and managed to sort it. See it in there, it's a multi, um, I suppose, teeth um, uh, bolt. And uh, I was trying the normal sockets. I thought it was a 15, but 15 would go in. Um, 14 would sort of go, I don't know where it was that one, yeah, 14 would go in, but because it's like that, it wouldn't grip on it. So what I did, I managed to get that sock in there and grind it down. So it fits in there, just right now. So if I keep that, if I ever have a problem again, I can get off with that. So that's what you need, you can probably buy a special bolt for it, because the, the edges of this bolt was too, too like, fat. It's hard to get in. So I'll get the other one back on now. Um, it's quite self-explanatory, but just make sure you get that little locating um, dowel, I suppose, um, in behind, so then it all goes on nice and level and neat, as it should. And I suppose you could put it on wrong and it would just not sit right, so you wouldn't be able to get a belt or anything on. But I'm just finishing tightening this up now. is isn't the greatest socket bar I've got here, but without out of that set, I managed to use a belt which is like a sort of a backup set I've got which sometimes comes in handy so anyway I won't let you I'll get this down so first thing I want to check is if the belt is rotational I don't actually think it is it doesn't there's no arrows on there and let's compare it with the old one looks about right so We'll get it on. 
we'll revert back to my little picture and I will just get rid of that old pulley out of the way at the minute and <coughs> so how I weigh it down like that how I've done it there I've just mar marked the tension on one so I know what way it goes around so it's over that one over that one under that one probably going to work it out easy enough um, by myself but, um, I actually think I've done the picture wrong anyway <laughs> whatever I think I know how to do it so I'm not sure it helped me a lot Did my picture all in a rush and I don't think it was very good. So we I think we just get it right. And just to actually because um I have read that the bottom pulley bolts come a little bit loose on these. It seems to be okay. It hasn't got no sort of clattering, so still slightly wrong there, aren't I? that's got to go under there that's why so what I'll do I'll still get slipping off these belts I need a number 15 go the other way Don't it. go that way make it nice and loose Off the other bits, might actually be better doing it that way. I've actually made a bit of a mirror, as you can see. I'm getting there, I think what I'm going to do is actually take it off of that one to get this side done. There we go. And if I get are seeing this live so you know some people would try to make the video look better like they're perfect and then they might take 10 attempts that new belt will be tight anyway because let's see if that even 10 not quite going. I've got that right, I'm sure I've got that right. I think it's because the new I think it's because of the new bell. Um so let's let's try it like that around that and then when we tension it see if we can get it over the over the smooth one. Let's try that. I think we are. I think we are there. So after that palaver, we managed to actually do do it. And um, actually, I think my drawings actually were right in the end. It's just I missed that that pulley out there on my um, on my picture. So yeah, um, that's back on there now. Just check it's all on all the teeth and that properly. Not sure down the 
Mm. Yeah, I think it is. I think it looks to be in line. Tickle the bottom there. Yep, they're all in. So that's that side of it done now. I'll put the fan back on. Then I'll start up and get the power steering fluid um, back in there. I'll just double check every bolt what I've done. And then ones behind there were all right. Then one I'm sure I tightened. I'll just double check the tensioner one. And that bolt there, um, I was going, that must be a left hand thread, the opposite to the, or the standard, um, because I could, it would normally be undoing when I turn the tension over, so I think I read that they're a left hand thread, but it would, yeah, I, I've, proved, I've proved that to be the case. So, um, yeah, pleased with that, it's all um, pretty good. Um, the belt's always a little bit harder to get back on because the old ones stretch slightly, so it gives you a little bit more more space to um, get it off but hopefully it stops that squelching sort of noise I had and yeah I'll just check these bolts get the fan off and then we're um, so now I've managed to start the thread up on that it just winds up so then I'll just get my spanner in there and um, and tighten it so I'll put you on the head cam just show me do it, doing that and then we can put some power steering fluid in. Better put them tight. Oh no, I haven't. I thought it was tightened up too tight. And we'll get it tightened. Handy little tool for doing this. Because if, um, I remember taking these off in the past on things like transit and older Fords and that and it could be a right pain to try and hold it all and everything to try and wedge something in and everything the tool's a little bit to be honest a little bit awkward to use but when you get it in place it certainly does help no end I think that's basically tight enough but me being me I'm really really make sure Yeah, we've done that now, and then we can get the power steering fluid. So now here we go. Um, I'll tip some in there first. I probably should have got a funnel, no doubt. I'll, I'll spill it, but I'm impatient. I want to get this in there. So let's try. I'll be alright with no wind. So I'll put. Uh, I'll pour some in, and then I'll start up. Let it get around the system a bit. Then I'll I'll top it up. Good job done, this will be. <coughs> Straight away feels pre pretty good. You could think this is the way you do it. You just feel it from side to side a few times. Definitely a lot quieter. I think when they made the early um, 90s, I think actually they didn't have power steering. They must have been a nightmare to drive, the things must have been. So I'll try to get it back to central. Not quite back to central. And then we'll see how the fluid's doing. Oh, bang camera. on that a little bit but I think it's um, just a matter of top top is now so I'll just turn it off to get a funnel it'll be easier we've got a funnel now it's a lot better actually I just made sure I cleaned it out so I didn't it didn't contaminate it at all I don't actually where the level line is on this I'm not really sure it says oh it'll be that won't it um, I should imagine that point there I'm not really quite sure, I'm just going to pour in what I've had, what I've been to go from there. i tell you what, um, the noisy engine sounds a lot quieter now. A lot of the problem has been... I'll leave it there at the moment. We're over three quarters full. 
and then I'll use it and check it. I actually ordered two because I was gonna, I needed to use it, so I am um, just gonna put it in and the old one was on with our land up, get around to doing it, so doing the job, so I don't probably need the other one I ordered, but it's always handy to have some. Try at the road uh, later, but it feels really nice. Slight tight spot at the end, but I think it's just the way it's probably meant to be. It's not actually really tight, you know these. It's a, it's a 2001 um, vehicle, so just a noisy sort of uh, um, TD5 clank when you start up. That's why I think if I, when I service, if I trust them, um, not when I service it, when I um, do the rocker cover gasket for needs doing, I'll adjust the uh, injectors because that can just be a bit of injector noise. But to be honest, it's pretty, it's pretty quiet for a for a old Land Rover, really. It's really, the noise before I should. I've gone hit the camera again. Um, I should let you hear it before, but um, actually, I did do a start up on one video, and you'll probably you couldn't notice a difference, but. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up here. All I've got to do is put that guard on now to protect it, uh, yourself and anybody else against the fan. And then um, that part of the job is done. Whether I service it today, I don't know. I might not. I've other things to do, so I'll see about that one. But um, I'll just turn it off now. I need to put my cowling back on. I took that off when I um, had an earth problem in the, in the snow. Um, but... Yeah, there you are it's all it's all done so i'm pleased about that i hated that squelching sort of noise it made and then it got worse when the power steering pump was on i would just kept quick look on there just to see if there's a leak of any, any anything there is actually stuff on there i'm a little bit concerned about the bottom of there but it could be from what i hope before. you can hear me okay um i was a little bit worried about that leaking underneath but if you look how well you can see up there but it was uh, the uh, the bottom pipe i think it was what when i took it off what had actually uh, come out of the pipe so now i've wiped it all down it looks to be to be good i'll keep an eye on it if it's anything it'll be that bottom pipe that's a bit broken um, the top one you can just you can't really see now but the top one looks to be fine so i'll just turn it off Yeah, so I'm quite um quite satisfied with that. Okay, it doesn't look to be leak. I'm just like down here trying to get. Yeah, that all looks dry now. Yeah, what happened is when I took it off, it's sort of gone over and the fluid had come down. I hadn't been under this side. It'd gone on there a little bit as well, but um the other one looks to be fine as well. So yeah, that's job done. So oh, if I can get up. So thanks for watching this um new um power steering pump and new tensioner and belt video on the land rover defender td5 um and there'll be plenty more videos of this coming up because i've got lots of bits and pieces to do thanks for watching i'll be along with another video again soon